We are gathered today for a really very special announcement. About two years ago, um, I had a meeting with Amanda and our faculty, and we began sort of brainstorming other things we could do to be sure that we got the word out about the great work going on in children's book writing and illustration and children's literature at Hollins. And during that meeting, somebody said, what we really need is a prize, a prize that is sponsored and offered through Hollins. And later on that summer, I had the opportunity to visit with James Carnegie Rockefeller, who was Margaret Wise Brown's fiance at the time of her death. I had a wonderful visit. He showed me all kinds of personal pictures and took me out to Only House, where she wrote some of her books, looking out at the sea, and talked about what a stylish woman she was and how much she loved writing and had such a clear vision for children's, children's books. As I came and continued my conversations with Mr. Rockefeller, I asked him if he would be interested in endowing a prize named for Margaret Wise Brown, our 1932 graduate from Hollins, and he said, indeed I would, and you go back and figure it out. So I went back, told Amanda, Amanda and the faculty met, Amanda came back and said, Let's do this prize for the best picture book in the country. Nobody else does that. There's no award existing for that. And after all, that's what Margaret Wise Brown did. We then were lucky enough to work with an, another alumna, award-winning Betty Branch, who was a painter and a sculptor and whose work is quite well known and absolutely beautiful. And Betty has now donated and given us the medal that we will be presenting for the first time today. So without further ado, and with gratitude to the judges panel who helped select our first prize winner from a number of very, very strong submissions this year, it is my great honor today to present to Philip Bildner the very first Margaret Wise Brown Prize. I'm so grateful for an opportunity like this. So I'd like to, you know, President Gray, thank you so much for presenting me with the medal today. This was wonderful. Okay, Amanda Pablo, thank you. So this is a magnificent, beautiful program you've got going tw almost 25 years now, which is really Im impressive. I'd like to thank James Rockefeller for, for creating this award. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'd like to thank um, Betty Branch for also for designing the medal, and I think and her daughter Polly helped to create and I'd also like to thank Ashley Wolf, who is here today, also who made the certificate. I also would be remiss if I if I didn't thank you know my agent is Erin Murphy, and Erin is like tough as nails, and, and she is so cool, and she's also she's got the moral compass that 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 an agent should have. I'd like to thank you know Melissa Manlove at Chronicle, who is my editor, and there is that sense of collaboration I had with Melissa on this book, and everyone who's so supportive at. at Chronicle with the book, and I'd like to thank John, John Parr, the illustrator, for bringing Cornelius to life, because the fact that someone could take my words and create something that looks like that, to me, that's magical, that's incredible. After Hurricane Katrina, as many of you know, or if you don't, I traveled down to New Orleans many times, and I traveled down with team volunteers, and we helped with the cleanup and recovery, and each time down here, you know, all the trips we met, heard some, heard some amazing people, heard some incredible stories, but every trip was different, every brigade was unique, but every trip was always about the people. And one person who came to speak to my group was Katie Reckle, who was a reporter for the Times Picayune, for the New Orleans Times Picayune. And I read this obituary that she wrote for a guy by the name Cornelius Washington, who is this street performer, this, this French Quarter hopper, who was this Pied Piper like garbage man. And the more I read about him, the more I learned about him, the more I realized that this person so much captured the essence and spirit of New Orleans. And Katie was kind enough to get me in touch, because Katrina had passed away, she was kind enough to get me in touch with his mother, Mary Wiley, okay? And Mary Wiley lived in the tiny town of Waterproof, Louisiana. So it was like, it was like, that was kind of was too perfect. And we spoke on the phone several times, and then she wrote me these handwritten notes that only a mother could write. And she filled in all the blanks about Cornelius. And the more after I said that, I, I felt as though I just had to write this story. And that's why I did write, um, I, I did write Marvelous Cornelius. The book is also, okay, it's also not just about New Orleans. It's also about everyday heroes. Okay? And when 
I talked about books being mirrors and windows, Cornelius was an everyday hero, as were the volunteers who went out to New Orleans, as were the team volunteers who traveled with me to New Orleans. So for many of them, this book was a mirror for them, a mirror for their experience. But it's also, the book serves as a window to young readers also. Um, it's a difficult subject matter. Katrina is a difficult subject matter to introduce to kids. So one way, it's why I decided to structure it as a modern day folk tale, to make this story accessible. That's why we did it this way. So the book is a window to a difficult time and a difficult place. Thank you very much, guys.